All right, we have a video on simplifying today. But before we get to the examples we're going to work on today, I'm going to go through three problems that are essential for you to be successful with this new topic. So the first thing is how you take a cube root by hand. We can use the factor tree if you like. So we can simplify this to 2 and 16. And then you can go to your 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. Since we are cube rubing this, you must circle three at a time and box your leftovers. So we have a two that comes outside. Cube root, we have two twos left inside, so we have two cube root of four. And that's simplifying the cube root of 32 by hand. When you have variables, you ask yourself, how many times does 3 go into 3? Once evenly, so an x comes out to the first power if you'd like. How many times does 3 go into 5? Well, it goes in once with a remainder of 2. And how many times does 3 go into 6? Twice evenly with no remainder. So your final answer is x, y, z squared, and then the cube root of y squared. And the last one I want to talk about is when you have a radical in the denominator, remember, this is 1 over the fourth root of 2 squared. So in order to evenly take a fourth root, it needs to have an exponent of 4. So how many more 2's do you need in the denominator before you can evenly take the fourth root of it? Well, you need 2 more. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the fourth root of 2 squared again. And that's going to give you the fourth root of 4 on top and just your 4, I'm sorry, your 2 in the denominator because we're going to now have the fourth root of 2 to the fourth power. Okay, now those are three essential skills for these problems you're about to work with. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the beginning of the notes and you're going to simplify to the simplest radical form. So whenever you're simplifying, unless it's stated otherwise, you always must write it in radical form, okay? Not exponents with rational exponents. So this first example is just a throwback problem to you have the same base with exponents. When you multiply two numbers or variables with the same base, what do you do to their exponents? You add them. So these obviously need a common denominator. So we're going to just rewrite this to 7 to the 3 sixths times 7 to the 4 sixths. And then you see that you're just going to add. So that's going to become 7 to the 7 sixths. So we really can't simplify that any further. So now we just have to write it in radical form. So this is, remember, the sixth root of 7 to the seventh power. But wait. I see that this can be simplified even more because 6 goes into 7 one time. So we can pull out a 7, and then we're left with the 6 root of 6 goes into 7 once with the remainder of 1. So that is your final answer to this first example. Now, before we go any further, I want to let you know that most of these questions can be simplified in different ways. The way I do it might not be the same way that you do it, which might not be the same way as your neighbor does it. As long as we come up with the same simplified answer, we're good to go. Okay? So this next number two. You should remember back in the day when you raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply. So this first starts out by simplifying to 27 to the 2 thirds times 6 to the 1 half. Because you raise 1 third to 2, that means you're going to multiply a third and 2. Okay? Now we need to simplify further. Whenever you can, it's good to rewrite. So 27, we know, is 3 cubed. So we can rearrange that to 3 cubed raised to the two-thirds power, times, and six you cannot rewrite, so it's still six to the one-half power. Now that equals, we know three to the third power raised to the two-thirds power can simply be rewritten as three times two-thirds is three squared, and then times our six to the one-half power. 
So now the only thing you have to do is rewrite this in radical form because those variables are exponents cannot be simplified any further. So 3 squared we know is 9 and a 1 half power we simply know is a square root. So 9 square root of 6 is your final answer for this example. So number 3, if you get an idea of what we're doing here, if you would like, you can go ahead and attempt this problem on your own by clicking pause and clicking play when you're ready. But I'm just going to go right ahead and go through it. Again, a negative exponent means it's the reciprocal. So this problem is simply being rewritten as 1 over 4 cubed times 2 cubed raised to the positive 1 third power now. When we raise an exponent to another exponent, again, you just need to multiply. So this is 1 over 4 to the third power raised to the 1 third power is just 4 times cubed times 1 third is just going to give you 2. So the answer for this problem is just 1 over 8, and you are done. So a lot of these questions are really simple. But some of these are going to end up getting a lot more complicated um, where you're going to have to get common bases and all sorts of fun stuff. So number four, again, when you divide, you know, you subtract your exponents. So this example has an exponent of one on top. Now remember, that's like saying this is six to the four-fourths over six to the three-fourths. So this problem will just simplify by subtracting. 4 fourths minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth, so this simplifies to 6 to the 1 fourth. You cannot change the base of 6. You cannot simplify your exponent, so your final answer is just the fourth root of 6 because all of these answers must be written in radical form unless otherwise stated. The cube root of 162, this again, you can break it down using the factor tree. And if you were to use the factor tree, you would end up with a 2, a 3, a 3, a 3, and another 3. So since this is a cube root, you would circle a pair of 3s, or a triple of 3s. So we would have 3, and then the third root of what's left over, a 2 and a 3, which is 6. And that's it. And you are done again. Number 6 is multiplying. A little fact about multiplying and dividing. You are allowed to multiply the outsides with the outsides of radicals and the insides of insides with radicals as long as the radical is the same. So for this example, since we have the cube root of 25 times the cube root of 5, we can multiply the insides so it is the cube root of 125. So from here, again, you can use the factor tree and just simplify this down. If you were to simplify this all the way down, you would end up with um, 25 and 5, which would give you 5 and 5, which you can see that 125 is actually just a perfect cube anyway, so the answer is just 5. Now, the cube root of 125 is something that you probably already knew without having to do that, but I wanted to show you what would happen just in case you did go through the work of simplifying by hand. Now, number seven, this one is quite a bit of a challenge. What you're going to do here is you're going to have to simplify this somehow, some way. And one of the things you're going to need to be able to do is get common denominators for this entire thing. And there's also going to be a way that you're going to need to subtract. And there's a way we can split up some terms a little bit as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is say we can split the 10 into a 5 raised to the 3 fourths power times a 2 raised to the 3 fourths power. Remember, back in the day, you are allowed to multiply bases if their exponents are the exact same. For the 6, we could rewrite this as 2 to the 1 sixth power times 3 to the 1 sixth power. And then we have this all over our 5 to the 1 sixth power. So since we have a 5 on the top and bottom, one of the things we can do right now is we can just simplify those two. And then we need to make sure that we get a common denominator of 12. So 3 fourths minus um, 1 sixth, that's going to give us our 5 to the 7 twelfths power. 
and we can rewrite our two once we can combine them. We can add the three fourths and the one sixth together, and that's going to give us a two to the eleven twelfths power. And then we just have to rewrite our three to have a three to the two twelfths power. Since they all have the same denominator now, now we can write the twelfth root of five to the seventh, two to the eleventh and 3 squared, and you do not have to type that in your calculator and get a crazy huge number. Okay, you just leave it alone just like that. So, moving on. Number 8, when you have, again, a cube root on top and a cube root on bottom, this is the same as multiplying. If the roots are the same, you can multiply or divide the insides. So this we can just simplify to the cubed root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. And we're done with that example. Again, these are all not difficult problems. Number 9. This is an example where you can break it down using the factor tree again. However, I like to sometimes show fun ways of doing things. Um, we could... Here's a different way to attack this problem. We can rewrite this as 64 to the one-fourth power, and we can rewrite the 64 as 2 to the sixth power raised to one-fourth. Six raised to the one-fourth power is 2 to the three-halves, and then we would just rewrite this as the square root of 2 cubed, which is the square root of 8, which we know one more time is 2 root 2. Now again, that's probably a longer way than you probably thought of doing, which is totally fine. Um, but it's just another way you can do it. Another way you could have done it is you could have done it using um, the fourth root of 2 to the 6th power. How many times does 4 go into 6? It goes in there once, so you pull out a 2. And then you're left with the fourth root of, you're left with 2, so 4, also known as, 2 squared, and then you can just reduce it this way. If your exponent and index can be reduced, then you reduce it, just like you would a fraction. So this would just become, again, 2 square root of 2 anyway. So there are always multiple ways you can solve these questions. It's just you got to pick one that works for you and make sure your final answer makes sense when you are done. The sixth root of 49. Again, I'll show you this one in exponent form. Um, we can rewrite this as 49 to the 1 6th power. 49 can be written as 7 squared to the 1 6th power, which is 7 to the 1 3rd power, which is the cube root of 7, because our answers must be in radical form. That's it. When you go to number 11, this is the fourth root of two-thirds. Now I always like rewriting this to the fourth root of two over the fourth root of three. I like them separate. And this goes back to one of those pregame warm-up problems where I said, you know, you gotta know how many, so you need an exponent of four on the inside of the simplest base. So if you only have one three in the denominator now, how many more do you need so it's a even fourth root? And the answer would be you would need three more. So you need to multiply the top and bottom by the fourth root of three cubed. And that will make your denominator, the radical in the denominator, go away, and you'll just have a three. And then you have the fourth root of two times the fourth root of 27, which is just the fourth root of 54. And then you would ask yourself if you can simplify the 54 down anymore. And in this case, it can't. So you're just going to leave it alone and you are finished. Number 12 is the exact same kind of question as number 11. So why don't you try this one on your own and see if you can handle it. You should have rewritten this again as the 4th root of 7 over the 4th root of 8. The fourth root of 8 can be rewritten as the fourth root of 2 cubed. Okay, now if we have 3 in the denominator and we need 4, 
you only need to multiply the top and bottom by the fourth root of 2 now. You don't want to multiply the top and bottom by the fourth root of 8 cubed because now you're just getting way too big. So after you do that, you're just going to end up with the fourth root of 14 on top because you can multiply those together over just your 2 and you are good to go with number 12. Number 13 is another example of multiplying. Now I'm going to show you a different way to simplify because if you were to multiply those two together you'd have a pretty big number. So what you can do is you can use the factor tree individually for your 20 which would simplify to 2 times 2 times 5 after you did the factor tree. And then if you simplified the 150 using the factor tree that would simplify to a 5 times another 5 times a 2 and a 3. Now what you can do is just circle in groups of 3 again. So if you were to circle just your group of 5's you would have 3 5's and you would also be able to circle a group of 3 for your 2's. So we would take out a 2 and we would take out a 5 and the only thing we have left over is a 3. So your final answer is just 10 cube root of 3. Again, it's a totally different way to attack this question. Now, if you wanted to multiply them together and do the factor tree that way, that is totally fine as well. So we're getting pretty close to the end here. Number 14, if you look, this is just 5x minus 3x because what's inside your parentheses is the exact same. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So we have 2 times 4 to the 3 fourths power. Of course, we're not going to leave it that way because we're not allowed to leave it with rational exponents. We want them in radical form. So, watch what I'm going to do here. This is 2 times 2 squared to the 3 fourths power. Remember, 4 is not the simplest base. And that from there is going to give us our 2 and then once we raise um, 2 times that, that's going to give us 3 halves. And then we can add 1 and 3 halves, and that's going to give us 2 to the 5 halves. And we're going to need to keep this guy going because we're going to write him in radical form now. So we have the square root of 2 to the 5th power. Remember, the index is 2. How many times does 2 go into 5? Twice. So we can pull out 2 squared, leaving us with the square root of 2 to the first power on the inside. So your final answer is 4 root 2 after all of that work. Number 15, you are not allowed to add or subtract unless the radicals are the exact same. So you cannot subtract the cube root of 81 minus the cube root of 3 unless you simplify it. So you can simplify the cube root of 81 down to 3 cube root of 3 minus, and then we still have our cube root of 3. That we just did with the factor tree by dividing by 3s, and you're going to have 3 to the 4th power. That's how we end up with 3 cube roots of 3. Now we just subtract. You get 2 cube root of 3. There's nothing else you can do, so you're done. Last question. This one can be done in a few different ways as well. This one's a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one in a totally different way than what you were thinking. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as 6 times 12 to the 1 fifth power times 7 times 24 to the 1 fifth power. So we can combine our 6 and 7 because we're just multiplying here. So that's going to be equal to 42. And now, since those exponents are the exact same, this is 42 times 12 times 24, all raised to the 1 fifth power. And if we were to break that down all the way down into factored form, um, that would give us an 84 fifth root of 9 after you multiply these out and use your factor tree to simplify the radical. Pretty tough, huh? So that's it. 
This is Longo and I'm out. See you. Bye.